Hey guys, this is the first in a series of videos I think I'm gonna call The Messy Journaler. I think. I'm actually not sure at the moment of filming. Anyway, um, in this first episode we are going to explore the idea of making sort of our own inks, for lack of a better term, and or um, fluid sort of paints. I have lots of powder pigments in my stash of stuff that I almost never use, including some primary elements and uh, magical something. Lindy Stamp Gain Magicals and Primary Elements, Color Arts Primary Elements. What the name of the company I couldn't remember last night, Prim uh, Color Art. Um, anyway, along with a, a bunch of these, I forget what the brand name are. I put them in these little salt and pepper shakers a long time ago, back when we still lived in California. Anyway, um, I'm not going to toss them out or purge them or anything, but it's time to use them. So, I already made one over the weekend, and well, let's give it a stir. I d dumped a bunch of different colors in here. There's a bunch of sediment that's sort of settled at the bottom, which is fine. Um, the color, there's a bunch of different colors in here, including some browns and some oranges. And I was kind of shooting for a rusty color, but I got this red color instead, which is fine. It's pretty and we're going to keep it that way and we're going to use it. Um, but let's try to do something that's more rusty. I'm using old um, spice jars, old glass jars I already had in my stash of stuff. So. wipe this off. I'll show you how I do one, then we'll speed through making a couple of them. And yeah, I'll show you why I did what I did. So you just need an old jar. I have this other one. This is a pepper grinder jar, but that's fine. Um, so I watched a lot of videos and did some research on making your own ink. Um, almost all of them said to use some vinegar as sort of a preservative and so the water doesn't evaporate. So I just have this old jar from downstairs of white wine vinegar. We're going to use that. Just any like dollar store vinegar would work. I'm not really measuring it, but there's probably, I don't know, a couple tablespoons of vinegar down there. Then it said also to put some salt in. I don't remember why. Something about brightening the color, I think. Again, this is salt I already had. This isn't from the kitchen. This is from my stash of um, watercolor stuff. Because if you put salt in wet watercolor paint and then let it dry naturally, it'll give you a cool texture. Anyway, so then before I put the water in, I just started dumping colors in, to be really honest. I'm going to start with knowing that we're still trying to find or make that sort of rusty color. This one says burnt orange. And these, these have been in here so long and they're kind of dried up and they're, yeah, so, I mean, let's see. Probably eyeshadow would work. Um, if you have some maybe watercolor pan paints that you don't care for, those might work. Now this one, yeah, again, this one says burnt orange. I'm going to try to get as much of it out as I can. Um, yeah, and that's a, actually by itself a kind of a nice rusty color. So that one's empty. Oh, yeah, see, look. I'm going to add, oh, let's see. Um, I think I'm going to add a little bit of turquoise to that. I think that might work. We're not going to add the whole jar this time because I want to use this one first, actually, to make a turquoise color. But let's 
do this and add a little bit. Okay. Then let's put some water. I recommend putting the pigment in first and then the water so that you don't overfill. Put the lid on very, very tightly. And shake. Oops, see, this is why you want to put the lid on tightly. Did I mention that I'm messy by, you know, nature? That looks pretty black because I probably put too much turquoise in. But this is like just a giant experiment and we're gonna just see what we can do. Look at that, how pretty is that? You could save the, the wipes to use in other art. Probably should have gloves on. Probably it's because this has a shaker top and that's probably not a great idea to have on here. All right, so let's put that aside and let's add some like red to it maybe. Because that went pretty green. Um, let's do like brilliant red. I'm just guessing. I'm just playing. I'm just dumping colors. I'm not using really any rhyme or reason. I'm just dumping. We'll stir it this way this time. Closer. We need some yellow. Um, let's, do, oops. let's do yellow ochre. Yeah, wear gloves. Why do I have a feeling it's going to be hard to get off my hands? Oh, that's pretty good. Let's grab a paintbrush I have right here. And our pad of paper. They're actually watercolor postcards, but we're just, again, we're using up what we have. That's a nice, like, rusty brown color. I was kind of hoping for more orange, um, but it's pretty close. So let's, um, let's see, do we want to add more yellow ochre? Or I do have lemon. Let's add lemon. Just keep adding pigments. If you have like a, this stash of pigment powders around, just keep adding them until you get the color you want, honestly. And if you don't have pigment powders, maybe you have fluid acrylics you're not using and you could do this with them, or maybe you have um, inks that you don't have the right color, you have just a few colors and you want to mix it and make something more unique and interesting. Use what you have. Make some interesting colors. I don't know that that did much. Let's see. It didn't really. I think we accidentally made a really good sepia tone color.
Yep, it's very brown. That's okay. It's gonna stay brown, look. It's a pretty brown, so we're gonna leave that one. Still shooting for a rusty color though. So I'm gonna get to mixing. I'm gonna speed forward through the process. I'm gonna switch camera angles and I'll let you know what I come up with at the end and I'll be back. Okay, so we used up a, quite a few of the powdered pigments. We have an orange color, a green, a turquoise, a brownie rusty color, and a red. That will work for me, I think. So if you're like me and you just have lots of powdered pigments around, play with what you have, experiment with what you have. Maybe you don't have a lot of powdered pigments, but you've got some inks. Okay, get those out. Maybe you don't have either of those. Water down some acrylic paint. Uh, make a few colors. Reuse some jars you have laying around the house. If you're like me, you've got drawers full. And make yourself some really watery fluid acrylic paints. We're not worried about light fastness. We're not worried about anything but a nice, bright, brilliant color you ex can experiment and play with, or a few colors, all right? Limit your color palette, though. I would encourage you not to make too many. I would do like no more than probably these five kind of colors. All right, I'll see you in the next video. Don't forget to experiment, to play, to make fun art. Have a good time doing it and go out and do something nice for yourself because you deserve it. I'll see you in episode two. Bye guys.